In this edition of the Parliament Report, poison, not bitter medicine, opposition leader critiques the government's budget, doubts raised about tax take from telecom sector, and opposition sends a strong message to Trinidad and Tobago. Opposition leader Andrew Holness has described the Portia Simpson Miller administration's $19.4 billion tax package as poison. Holness told his colleagues in Parliament on May 31 that the medicine dispensed by Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips on May 24 was not the bitter prescription his then Jamaica Labour Party government had proposed last year. He said the new measures had the effect of further impoverishing the poor, killing businesses and reducing growth in the economy. In his first contribution to the budget debate as opposition leader, Holness said Phillips went wide of the mark as he appeared to have confused tax reform with, it, with the tax measures announced. He said the finance minister had squandered the opportunity to reform the tax system in Jamaica. Holness said the minister had turned the opportunity into a crisis. In the run-up to the December 2011 general election, Holness had warned the country that his then administration would have very little option but to dispense bitter medicine in what appeared to have been efforts to rescue the stalled standby agreement with the International Monetary Fund. The current administration is in talks with the fund as it seeks to negotiate a new three-year agreement. In a presentation punctuated by crosstalk between the opposition leader and the government side, Holness said a GLP government would have opted to widen the tax base. He said placing general consumption tax GCT on basic food items without first developing a system of protecting the poor violated the principles guiding tax reform. The parliamentary opposition is raising serious doubts about the government's ability to pull in a significant amount of the projected $5.2 billion in new taxes from the telecommunications sector. Opposition spokesman on finance, Audley Shaw, says the government's proposal to impose a United States-U.S. 75 cents tax per minute on incoming international calls terminating on the mobile network is hostile and discriminatory. He says the measure will either have to be abolished or will not realize the projected revenue. Shaw was making his presentation to the 2012-2013 budget debate in Parliament on May 29 and highlighted U.S. insistence that a levy placed on international calls terminating in Jamaica was discriminatory. Jamaica currently imposes a levy of U.S. 2 cents on mobile networks and U.S. 3 cents on fixed network on international calls terminating here to fund its e-learning program through the Universal Access Fund. Shaw argued that the new tax was being imposed on top of a levy which was still being disputed. And Shaw said his counterpart, Dr. Phillips, was tinkering and fiddling with the business of the country. He said the finance minister had failed to pursue courageous, fundamental and game-changing action that was needed to take the country forward. Shaw first commended Phillips for a fairly accurate analysis of the economic plight facing the country. However, he said the finance minister defined the problem, but later prescribed half measures and vague timelines for achieving critical benchmarks. Opposition spokesman on transport and works Carl Semuda wants Jamaica to tell its CARICOM neighbor Trinidad and Tobago that it will not continue to be a receptacle for its goods. Declaring that enough is enough, Semuda said Trinidad should be told that Jamaica was not its breadbasket. The North Central St. Andrew Member of Parliament, who served as the country's industry and commerce minister between 2007 and 2011, was making his contribution on May 30 to the 2012-2013 budget debate in the House of Representatives. Samuela said Jamaica has not been benefiting from its membership in CARICOM and suggested that the country leave the bloc of Caribbean member states. And finally in the Parliament report, legislation is coming to impose stiffer fines on persons who breach the Jamaican fisheries law. Agriculture Minister Roger Clark told his parliamentary colleagues on May 30 that the government would table in Parliament this year a new fisheries bill. He said the proposed law would provide a comprehensive legal framework for the sustainable management of fisheries locally in keeping with international standards. Clark's comments come against the background of what he described as the over-exploitation of Jamaica's most productive fishing ground, the Pedro Bank. In his contribution to the 2012-2013 budget debate in the House of Representatives, 
Clark blamed the depletion of the country's fisheries resources mainly on the unsustainable fishing practices, such as dynamiting, use of small diameter mesh sizes for traps and nets, and spear fishing at nights. The agriculture minister warned that there would be no let up on enforcement activities as it relates to illegal fishing practices. This has been another edition of the Parliament Report. Thanks for logging on. Join us next time for another report. Until then, I'm Edmund Campbell saying what good.